Hey, what is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the PHNX Rising Podcast. My name is Ramon Chavez. I'm super happy to be here. Alongside me is my partner, Owen Evans. Owen, how you doing, my friend? I'm good. I'm good. It's yeah, we're inching ever closer to the start of the actual season, which is always exciting. I love the fashion statement today with the shirt. Yeah, I've gone with a dedication from one club legend, shout out to Mr. J, to another club legend. In fact, the club legend, really, in, in Solomon Asante. I don't know. Looking good. I might, might ask you like where you got it because I kind of I don't want to wear it too. Uh, it's very exclusive. Very I'm exclusive. Very I missed exclusive. out. <laughs> and of course, as always, El Jefe, our producer, Edwin Perez. How are you, sir? Good. It's a good day when I get to twin with one of you. Uh, so me and Ramon, <laughs> we, uh, we, we decided to go in style. I mean, I know Owen tried to show us up with the rare solo bandito kind of kit, but come on. Uh, it just looks good. It just looks good. Me and uh, me and Ramon, you know, with the PHNX swag. I mean, it's not, it's not the rising shirt. It's not mm -hmm. the rising shirt, but it's close to it. <laughs> All right, yo. Well, thank you for being here. It's always great to be here with you guys, and we're gonna have a great show today. Before we get started, though, I do want to ask you guys if you're watching us right now to make sure to like, share, and subscribe to this show. It really helps us out here. Makes us bigger better faster stronger and it just makes us have a good time here with you guys so the more you guys help us out the bigger we can grow the more people we can have on the show so always appreciate that and if you're listening to us after the show on any of the streaming services you can do the same thing you can like us rate us five stars subscribe write a comment um it always helps us out here at the phnx rising podcast all right y'all so let's go ahead and get started we'll be talking uh, a few things we got some big news actually dropped today uh of the partnership between phoenix rising and Bally Sports, so that's going to be really cool to talk about. Uh, we also have more information about what's going on on Monday, which is the jersey reveal, and also I believe the captaincy. We're going to find out. Indeed. Yeah, we will. We will. So some big news on Monday. Uh, so make sure to to be there for that event. We'll talk about it a little bit later as well. And also on Tuesday, after that event, we're going to have a very special guest. We'll talk about that uh, a little bit later on as well. And then uh, if you guys were here for our Tuesday show, you guys, uh, we kind of came up with an idea here between, between the three of us to make our very own versions of uh, of Rising Jersey. So we took some time. We, you know, we we all know that our passion is uh, graphic design. Prepare to be terrified. Exactly. Like, <laughs> we've got good and we've got bad. <laughs> Bad and if you're lucky, we might release the template and you can give us your own. As yeah, well, we should so. release it on Twitter and people can do yeah, their own. So yeah, I think we can. And then, of course, uh, we'll talk some business with uh, the doubleheader on Saturday between Rising and GCU and also FC Tucson. So that's going to be pretty cool. Hopefully it's not too cold. I just I was just checking the weather app before we got started to see if I needed some more layers. So, uh, Owen, let's go ahead and start and start with the show. Let's talk about the news that just dropped today. A lot of people were unhappy when I saw it, uh, saw the Twitter replies of of uh of phoenix rising giving that big announcement of their partnership with uh valley sports so what's going on there uh, if people haven't heard about it can you give us more information about that sure so valley sports arizona is taking over now as the local media partner uh, the local broadcast partner for phoenix rising um that means they're going to be airing the games barring uh the two that are going to be on linear ESPN platforms that is the game against Tampa Bay Rowdies at home the game away to Louisville because those are both on ESPN2 they won't be airing locally here on mm -hmm. Bally however every other game will be airing locally on Bally Sports Arizona or extra in five cases that's tape delay um mm -hmm. a lot of people as you said were not happy about this Count me um, as one of those yeah I think you know uh boys just as a just to talk to the whole room here, so I don't have Bally. Do you have Bally? I do. I can't. I don't know. I think the only way you can get it is through Cox. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sign up with Cox. <laughs> Edwin, do you have Bally? Uh, funny enough, I do not have Bally, and I re recently just worked a game that was on Bally Sports. So someone asked me how to find it, and I told them I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that that's almost the problem, right? Because Rising has come from being on the CW, uh, a free over the air channel. Mm -hmm. Um. Not only that, but they also, even if you didn't have their TV channel, it was streamed for free on the ABC app, right? So you could actually get those games for free. Now you will not have free access to Rising Games anymore. I will point out that this does not impact the uh, presence of games on ESPN+. Plus. Games will still be available on ESPN+, Plus as they have always been, because uh, the the deal with Bally is not exclusive. Um, Rising... Uh, not sorry, Rising, the league has had that ESPN deal in place for, this is now the third season, 
Um, and that deal supersedes the local media deals. Mm-hmm. Uh, the broadcast strategy listing on Bali are ultimately going to be effectively the same. Um, you know, it, those broadcasts come in from from Vista in Florida, mm-hmm. uh, USL Productions. They tend to operate under that name. Um, but you know, you're going to hear the same kind of people that that we've always had. Um, it does it change a lot in terms of what you're going to see on the broadcast? Possibly not. Although I did hear, you know, multiple rationales have been given, you know, Mm -hmm. people publicly saying on Twitter about how, you know, it's a, it's a big step up even just in prestige. Um, It's a, I know that, you know, amidst accusations of it being about money, one of Rising's co-owners in, um, in Brandon McCarthy actually said publicly on, on social media today, no, this had nothing to do with money. Uh, And so, you know, I, ultimately, I think that in terms of the actual output, not a lot changes. What changes is who has access to it. And in the current climate, you know, where Bally Sports, or as it would have been three years ago, Fox Sports Arizona, it's not the same as it was back when the you know now expired CW deal mm-hmm. took effect. Um, you know, I think they're in a very different place. The local sports media market's going through a lot of almost soul searching, I think, in terms of working out where it is and what it's going to be going forward. And it's interesting. Um, and I, I wasn't surprised at the negative reaction today, but it was quite overwhelming, I think, on social media. Yeah. No, and I, I think, at least on my end, I have a really sour taste in my mouth when it comes to Valley Sports or before that Fox Sports and overall Sinclair broadcast. And just due to the fact of the Suns, you know, I'm a, obviously we live here in Phoenix. The Suns are pretty much the the marquee franchise here um and for fans like me that grew up on UPN 45 on and seeing these old school you know broadcast on over the air tv not having access to the suns over these last past you know probably around 10 years has made it difficult to, for me to connect with the club and that's why I got so upset when I saw it because of the fact that maybe there was a little kid like me that watched you know the the CW shows uh, on, on free TV, and now they're not going to be able to watch their their favorite players or their favorite team, and that's why I get upset because of those people like that. I think and, it's interesting though because you know we talk about, or, or one of the things that'll be put forward is the fact that this does put it in front of more sports fans, perhaps. But are those people motivated to watch something that isn't, mm-hmm. you know, whatever sport that? they are obsessed with and that's what they've tuned in for because you've got that higher barrier to, to entry almost right it's not a free to air channel anymore mm-hmm. you, you have to ask it yeah there'll be more sports fans who watch this but are they you know a Suns fans actually going to care about watching it um I, I don't know whereas are you otherwise appealing to a broader spectrum of just people in general yeah i mean it'll certainly be in more bars you know yeah. like after the yeah. Suns game or coyotes game or whatever's going on but that that's the reason it worried me you know, once you clarified mm-hmm. that the ESPN platform was going to continue to uh, broadcast the game, I kind of sighed a little bit of relief. But still, you're still paying ten dollars extra mm-hmm. that you wouldn't have just to get those games. You know what I'm saying? So, but mm-hmm. and this is the important caveat to remember more broadly: the ESPN deal with USL. This is the final year of that deal. They signed a three-year deal ahead of the 2019 season through this. Uh, mm, I think I was, no, sorry. It was a three-year deal after the end of the 2019 season. I got the dates mixed up in my head. It's through the 2022 season. So, yes, this is the last year under that current deal. And so where does the league go from here? Because at the moment, exclusivity in terms of local markets isn't a thing. Mm-hmm. Okay? The teams can't sell those exclusive local rights because all the games are on ESPN+. Plus. As USL continues to mature, does it look down the route that other sports leagues here take? Because that's almost the question. For now, everything's fine, right? You've got ESPN+. Plus. But next year, when that goes back to the drawing board, you've got less two teams there. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to pretend that I know some of the figures behind the scenes that are going around. I don't pretend that I know what people are willing to pay mm-hmm. in terms of broadcasters. But if exclusivity does come onto the table next year, then you have the question, does Bally want them to be exclusive? And I think that's the worry more going forward. Yeah. Not something, something that the club can control. Yeah. That could be something that comes out of USL next season mm-hmm. when the current ESPN deal expires. Yeah, and there's a lot of variables. You know, if, if Bally made it easier for someone like, you know, us here to just have access to the game via something that's not cable, 
whether it's you know YouTube TV or Fubo or Hulu, whatever they have now, it, I would be comfortable with that. But but the fact that they made it make it so difficult to just watch your favorite teams, that's why I get upset. And so hopefully the ESPN deal or they can work something out where it continues to at least have an alternative method or some sort of way for fans to just pay for it and have easy access. Because I I, th- I feel like we're seeing that everywhere now. You know, we we all knew that the cord cutting was coming when it came to cable. But now you get these regional broadcasts where you don't have access to a certain team because you live in this area. And I think it just makes it frustrating. And honestly, it pushes people towards piracy. You know, so if these you know companies are like, hey, you know, you have Owen over here. You can't watch their, his favorite hockey team. He's like, you know what? Okay, I'm just going to go to this stream. You know, uh, it doesn't just, matter. Just to be clear to any FBI people watching this. No, <laughs> no, I, I don't do that. It's the reality. It's, uh... <laughs> it's the reality. He does it. You know, no, I'm just kidding. No, but but that's what it is. That that's my honest Ramon this is, rant. I'm being terribly slandered on this podcast today. <laughs> no, but I'm just saying, like, just, let's just keep it real. But uh, I'm hoping for the best. I, I hope that they continue the ESPN deal in whatever fashion they they can do it. And um, the Bally Sports uh, deal does not include the U.S. Open Cup. Is that correct? No, and the reason for that is because the U.S. Soccer Federation signs its own TV deal. There, no team is allowed to sell their own rights okay. for that once they reach the competition proper. U.S. Soccer has already signed the deal that sells those rights entirely to ESPN+. Plus. The radio rights are also sold. Effectively, teams can't do anything of note when it comes to the broadcast rights for the U.S. Open Cup. It's all already sold. Gotcha. Uh, let's read some comments here. We have Jet. He's, uh, he's saying, I'll have less to look at at the bar, uh, asking the bartenders to try on CW for sports. It's yeah, true. Yeah, I mean, and, yeah. and you've got less, especially when you do it early doors. I know that. Sometimes you'll be asking, like, 10, 15 minutes before the game and they go, you want to put it on? And there's some weird like drama on there. Yeah. And yeah. Oh yeah. Two and a half, get, man. Get weird looks. <laughs> oh yeah. Something that's like just recycled from decades ago. Yeah. Um, Thomas says, uh, pay wall potential fans, which is very true. I, I don't watch the D-backs because of that. When the D-backs used to be on channel three way back in the day, probably before, you know, you guys. Well, I, I've got some good news for there, which is no one's watched the D-backs now because they're. I was going to say only because of that, yeah. Ramon. That's a little bold to say. <laughs> Sorry, Derek. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, uh, Michael says I'd asked him what the viewership was for the Liga M- uh, MX games. The, the biggest soccer league in America, by the way, Liga MX. Um, and then Alex says I wouldn't mind paying money for Bally Sports, but I don't want to pay for everything on Cox. Give me a local sports only streaming package and I'm in. So. Well, apparently that that is coming, isn't it? Um, it's just that it might be quite expensive compared to some of the other streaming services yeah. we've gotten. Used Anything to. past ten, even HBO Max is like fifteen. I'm like, ugh, I don't know. Well, well, I, don't I, mean, know, if I know that, that some of the uh, US fans are definitely going to have to do that now with the uh, yeah. all those games moving over there. That's so it's... weird. I just feel it's so weird because some of them will be on CBS or Paramount Plus. Other ones are going to be on HBO. It's just well, that's like, just the nature of international just, football. Come on, though, y'all, you know, like, and ev- everything. Yeah, <laughs> Man, every, so everything hard. is everywhere, right? You know, if you're a rising fan right now, you look at it. You look at your ESPN Plus, and you go, "It's great." You know, I've got, I've got, you know, Rising on there. Mm-hmm. You've got the FA Cup. Mm-hmm. You've got other leagues from Europe. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot to watch on there. Yeah, if you're into MLS, I think they got the Spanish mm-hmm. one too. Yeah, but it's it's <laughs> on there. You know, um, but you look at the way that's they've segmented. Where you've got, you know. If you want to watch the Premier League, you've got to get Peacock. If you want to watch the Champions yeah. League, you've got to get Paramount Plus. And now suddenly, if you want to watch Rising, you might have to pay for Bally Sports as well. That's, if you speak Spanish, how many or streaming you, packages are we talking? Or you're about? Pas- or partial to hearing Spanish commentary too. The it has all of those combined. So hopefully they, yeah, I, it's just frustrating, man. Yeah, There's just so many. Yeah, Edwin, any takes on this, man? I'm just, as as a footy fan myself, I'm just frustrated at how much things I have to get to watch the beautiful sport. It's just like it's taking it away. I, yeah. I hate that I have to look up every game that I want to watch and figure out where they are. You know, whether that be Paramount Plus, Peacock, as, as Owen mentioned. I just need a streaming service that kind of meshes it all. Obviously, that would be complicated and it would be cost a lot, but that truly does what football TV was supposed to. I mean, I... I I have access to football TV, and it was supposed to be the hub of all footy, but now it seems like they don't have the exclusive rights for some stuff, and even some of the qualifier games in the international, mm-hmm. you have to play pay-per-view, and it's like... Yeah, you guys were talking plus. about that uh, a few weeks oh, ago. Oh, some of the South America games, yeah, where it was... I was looking at one of them, was it when Kev was called up to the Jamaican national team, and they went down to South America, and it was just a stupid amount of money for a single game a friendly yeah. <laughs> for a friendly I'm, I'm not it was a game that. of risk like, because like you would pay 40 dollars for one game and that game could be absolute crap 
and then you would, you would just have to live with it. Like I wouldn't even buy like a Canelo fight for forty bucks. Like <laughs> it, it was even like Bolivia Peru. Nothing against the two sides, but I'm not paying forty dollars to watch the two. Now First of all, it's for too, free. Too enough. much altitude in that matchup, but yes. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And uh, I mean, even though oh, but it like ESPN Plus has its perk and has some things mm-hmm. I watch, but it's not. It doesn't encompass everything. Like. As much as I'd like to back MLS, I mean, we saw how their their ratings and viewings are going over there. I mean, yeah. they still got to fix that. So yeah. it just frustrates me, as, as you guys said, that... Just make it easy, man. We'll yeah, just make it easy, exactly. The beautiful sport is intended to be watched by all. It's just that worry, isn't it? That when the ESPN deal gets renegotiated, do the blackouts start rolling in? Mm-hmm. Exactly. All right, y'all. So let's take a quick break from this conversation. Let's talk about UFC 272. You guys are big fans of the sport. Covington and Masvidal are stepping into the octagon this weekend. And if you're looking to make some bets, DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of UFC, has a knockout offer for new customers. Bet just $1 on the main event and get $100 in free bets no matter what. If it's a first round knockout, you get paid. Majority draw, you get paid. Double knockout resulting in a no contest ruling. You're going to get paid. So it's pretty cool. So make sure to go ahead and place your bets. DraftKings is a safe, secure, and reliable sports betting app. Best of all, you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code PHNX. Throw down just $1 on the UFC 272 main event and get $100 in free bets no matter what happens in the fight. That's code PHNX this Saturday at DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of UFC. You do have to be 21 and over, Arizona only. Gambling problem, call 1 800 next step. New customers only, minimum $5 deposit. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. All right, y'all. We got a great uh, weekend. I, I think we have a great weekend. We got the doubleheader. Well, it's not exactly mm-hmm. the weekend, but on Monday, it's going to be a great, great uh, day to be uh, a long Phoenix. weekend. We'll call it a long weekend. Exactly. Some people spring breaks. So, yeah. you know. Yes, there, baby. There you go. There you go. Uh, not me. It's the week after. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's going to be a great Monday. Uh, and the reason for that is because they finally announced, uh, and by they I mean Rising, that on Monday they're going to reveal the new kit and also a new captain. Is that, yeah. does that sound about right? Yeah. It's, it's going to be a lot of news. A lot of news on Monday. I think they're just like waiting till the last week, right? You know? Yeah, throw it all at the last minute, you know, and- <laughs> Makes it easier for us. Um, you need a drafting, uh, a drink after those drafting <laughs> novels. I mean, I don't have to read it all, but I'm just, I just try to go with the flow. But anyway, uh, we we might get a drink on Monday. You know, after the the jersey reveal. So if you guys go down into the Churchill, uh, it starts at six p.m. Six p.m. Six p.m. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Edwin, you know, you're gonna. It's pretty close to you, so you can just walk on over there but it's gonna be a great time so if you guys don't have anything to do or you guys can go right after work make sure to meet us down there at the church it's gonna be a great time gonna see some rising players the coaches and of course mr owen himself in the yeah flesh. i'll be there yeah i'll so. be there i mean these guys will be there as well so, <laughs> so free, uh, come say hi do you think anything else will be dropping as far as announcements on on monday or is it just the the jersey and the captain? Do really as far as i can tell although there is of course a q a with with rick uh, with bobby with the new captain so okay. you know there's a lot to a lot to follow there, you know. Come along if you have questions that you want to ask them. That's the just time. Go ahead and do it. Yeah. So you've been to past events with Jersey reveals. How does it typically work? Is it kind of like an MC and just music? Or... It's kind of weird. I'm not sure what to expect this year because the last one we had was pre-COVID. Oh, um, that's true. You know, they they were. I'll be honest, quite uh, boozy events. Mm. Let's be honest. There you um, go. Like a lot of people, a lot of drinking. It's a lot of different players coming out. They kind of do the whole, you know, fashion show type thing, except nice. with copious amounts of alcohol. <laughs> um, it's it's going to be interesting. And the other thing that people will find is you are able to have a lot more interaction with players than, than you might expect, right? They they do tend to come down and hang around and chat for a while after. So, you know, mm-hmm. it should be a really good event. And speaking of captains, uh, Edwin, did you have an opinion on who should be the captain this year? Ooh, that's a fun one. We've talked it? about it before, but now that we're getting down to the wire, you know, let's let's place on our bets. Uh, if I had a bet, I'm a betting <laughs> man. Uh, after what has been slowly revealed and slowly we've talked about, I gotta go Darnell King. I think. Are you stealing my? <laughs> I've been saying this for like a month now. I know. That's why I, mean, I, I didn't go first. But I knew you. what you were gonna say. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna go bold and just <laughs> just go someone else. I think it's gotta be Darnell. I mean, who else logically makes sense? And it seems, I mean, 
in the in the preseason games, I'm pretty sure we saw him give the speech in uh, pre match for one of the games. So it just seems it's it's natural. I mean, it just seems like it's the right move. But of course, there, there's a few options. Don't get me wrong. Uh, mm-hmm. Who else would you put in that? Maybe like top three. Oh, top three. That's interesting. I think Lambert, Ooh. just for how long he's been with the club, and True. I think he, he'd be vocal. Uh, Farrell, maybe? Yeah. Thomas yeah. read my mind. Uh, I mean, Santi would be the only other one, but I know it, it's just... Nah, it, see, I think if you were to pick another person, you'd put Aiden in that conversation. Aiden, Ooh. that's fair. Uh, no, Santi but, will run from the other side and start a fight. <laughs> of, yeah, same as that's Farrell. Like, times, they, so. they both do that. But, like, you have to bear... Yeah, this is... Look, I think we're all somewhat in agreement, aren't we, that we think it's going to be Darnell King. Mm-hmm. Um, but the real answer to that, if you want to know who the captain is, the captain is, of course, the guest that we're going to have on Tuesday night's show. That's right. Breaking week. news, everybody. Yeah. So, you know, if you guys missed our last Tuesday show, need to, you need to be here on Tuesday, next Tuesday. Tuesday at 6, yeah. And we'll be talking with the new Phoenix Rising captain. So if you guys missed the event on Monday and don't know who it is, just tune in on Tuesday. Yeah, we'll have him here. Exactly. Well, and then just drop your questions. Here, but to, not here. <laughs> on the show. Exactly. So uh, let's read some comments here. We have uh, Thomas. He said uh, Joe Farrell. Uh, PHX Rising Nation. He's just here to listen. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Phil Berman, King, Lambert, or more. That's true. He kind of went that route, too. Santi just booted a ball out of the stadium. Uh, King. And then Lalo Delgado. was the I, I think we can rule Lalo out. No. I Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, again, the the captain will be here on Tuesday. We'll be able to have some questions for him. So you know, once you once you guys find out or you guys have some questions, just pop them on on Tuesday. That's gonna be a great time. All right, y'all. So let's get let's get to the fun stuff because I know we kind of had uh, some some graphic design ex, uh, excitement today it's for everybody. It's our passion, of course. It's our passion. Um. So uh, last Tuesday we talked about maybe what we wanted as far as the jersey. So we kind of took it upon ourselves to get into uh, what's it, Microsoft Painter. Or I don't know what you guys used. <laughs> and uh, we kind of created our own. Uh, well, Owen pro- provided a mock-up, and then we kind of painted it over. So that's pretty good. So uh, how should we do this? Should we start with Owen first? Or? Yeah, I think mine is the first one in there, I think, isn't it? All right. It? And so, uh, everybody in the comments that's watching us right now, let us know your feelings. See have if a we look can... at what we've put forward. as our, We've got <laughs> our, our dream kits, and then we've got some nightmare kits as well. So let's see. Yeah. Start with the dream kits. We're going to start good. We're going to start good. All right. Okay, so... I don't know how well you can see this, unfortunately, the way the template has come out here. But what I went with is the fact that, and this one was actually a template that Adidas used, uh, but it's a classic, right? It's a classic Bandidos kit Mm. as well. You got to describe it, though. In black, it's a classic Bandidos kit. So I think that, you know, they did that thing a few years ago. They they paid uh, homage to the one, uh, you know, the glow sticks, wasn't it? And they had the little red lines. If you want to pay homage to your fans, go with one of their best kits they've put out. Mm. Just change it slightly. It's respectful, but not stealing. Got it. So here, let's go with that. You've got the pattern under there. It's like the old German kit, but we're going with the red there. Okay, like so it. rising red, the black trim. I went with the black shorts because I think that's something that's underutilized. Mm. I think that having that secondary color in there is always good. So why not? Let's go with that. That looks pretty good. I like it. Bill uh, Berman doesn't like it, uh, but, <laughs> but Thomas says, sheesh. So... And we're good. Mixed back. Pretty mixed even back. Out. It's okay. Legs it's are okay. very skinny, yeah. bad look, for soccer players. Look, it's got better reaction than the Bally Sports announcement. So let's carry on, hey, please. That's true. That's true. Uh, Edwin, should we do your... Leave mine last. Let's go with it because mine's terrible. Uh, <laughs> uh, mine is a little bit different. I like uh, it. It's a little... It's obviously the classic rising red. I think uh, you got to go with that. Uh Sorry, I laughed a little bit at the comments. Um, <laughs> the, you have some yellow arches. It, you know, it kind of it's like the McDonald's golden arches a little bit, but it looks good. I think it's a little clean. Are you, you, going with are you making a Hang reference on. to so let's, something? Let's, let's just, I'm going to say what I see here. I see a red shirt. Yeah, okay. With a black neck and then yellow trim, yeah? Yeah. I see the AZ United in there. That's, that's a good shout, actually, because they kind of did similar, except it was blue neck. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I get what you're saying. McDonald's it's a bit is- McDonald'sy. <laughs> yeah, it's you know? a little McDonald's. Honestly, it looks but... like Real Salt Lake's uh, uniform. I don't know if you guys watched that. That's why he brought Tate yeah. back. Yeah. <laughs> That's why but you brought... know what I would say? Yeah. You know what I would say? Out of all of the ones that we're actually going to see today, I reckon this is the most likely we're going to see. I think so. I, I think we could Are you see hinting something at like something, Owen? Did no, you have no, some I insider just feel information? Like ultimately, mine isn't going to happen. <laughs> 
Okay, as much as I'd like it to happen, mine isn't going to happen. I mean, yours is, we'll see what sponsor you've slapped on the chest yeah, for your mine's, one. So mine's that's good. not going to happen. I, like I think it. Edwin's is the most likely to happen. I do like Edwin's. Uh, people in the chat, go ahead and rank them right now. Yeah, yeah. Let us know we'll what you I'll put a poll up. On Slap Food the, City in the front and we're set. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Food did you, guys, did you guys hear they got a, a Starbucks at Food City now? I'm just little local news for you guys so oh really yeah so if you guys are down there at food city you know food city. you get some get some starbucks down get the some and some, some sandals <laughs> I, I like the I, I like alex chiming in there with would you like fries with that I, it's Oof. a little mcdonald'sy don't Oof. get me wrong but i think it, it it could be something we see i don't know again that's just a guess that's just a guess rusty right. says i love having a diamond pattern yeah that was that was nice I when like they did too. that whole like diamondy type thing was nice all right let's go all with right. the big reveal let's Again. have a look at yours there you go <laughs> there we go that is now, awesome. this, is, this is a real microsoft paint job that's right, right. this is a beauty i, I don't have the, the I'm not skills sure why he has or a the tail why the, does the guy have a tail <laughs> that was me you know how like sometimes you couldn't stay between the lines that's exactly me but anyway i just i i feel you just wouldn't give us your age we've just got less than 30. It's less than 30 that's yeah, close enough I mean, it's... um also i wish we could zoom in but i don't know if anybody can see the sponsor on there let me know in the comments if you see it i just went so i know white was shunned upon uh <laughs> Jared. that's true actually but nancy is no longer a part it's no longer yes no. that's there's a reason for it though um so anyway <laughs> describing the kit I was told white was not allowed, so I went with red. No, no, no uh, white, no Black white. shorts, I think those look classy. I feel like the gold, I don't know what exact, you know, color it is, but the gold is underutilized in their kit. You know, I think, like, maybe we could have a, a, a couple more trimmings of it, so that's why I added the Adidas stripes and uh, the socks as well. And also, peep the feet. You got a Jordan uh, uh, little cleats there, so just... A little bit of everything. And yeah, of course, Rising uh, had Didier Drog, but the next big shock is that Michael Jordan is actually going to play a third sport. It's, uh, it's and PSG signing, yeah, and Phoenix he's signing Rising. He's a new center back so, for Phoenix Rising FC. Exactly. So pretty, I like that. So shout, yeah. shout out Venetians. So. All right. So the nightmare kits here. Now, Ramon, you forgot to do one. I Mine was just it a was, mixture of both. So yeah. So <laughs> let's combine them. here we go. Can we, can we throw my nightmare kit, kit up, please? So here's what I thought, right? I love the we white. We hate white kits. I love right? the white. So we go with full white here. Okay. We also realize that the the worst template at the moment in the world is that Puma one. <laughs> Those right? weren't the nightmare Those weren't the nightmare kits. <laughs> Sorry, Thomas. Thomas, Thomas they were don't not. be, don't they be were rude, not. man. I tried. But here's the nightmare. <laughs> Imagine that you had not only did you have a white kit. Not only was it no badge on there, just the name across, like some kind of terrible Puma template that unfortunately mm -hmm. exists, mm -hmm. but they're going to call them The Rising. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I, li I would purchase that one. Yeah. Yeah, put it in the shop. I like it. Turn? It's your turn. <laughs> Edwin. Edwin's. I, I'm Mine is there. a banger. <laughs> Mine is not even Let's a nightmare. It. It's a, I like the original it's version of this. I don't know why I'm on this. Why am I on the I like nightmare? That we're, I think I why like that word part. Why is my face on the nightmare? Kid? I like it. You represent rising, you know, as a whole. So I, I like the PHNX uh, Rising podcast logo in there. That's, that's branding. That's very nice. Branding. Branding. Why are the shoes different colors? It's like so, Ramon. My favorite US kit that's ever been released is the Where's Waldo kit. Yeah, yeah. that one was fun. I, think it's I like banger, it. So it's, an, it's, it's that, but including the shoes, which is one's gonna be red, one's gonna be white. And then you got the, we, you need burbs, more burbs, the better. So we got a burb on the shorts. Burb then, up. you know, rising as a whole just relates to Owen. Everyone loves Owen. Yeah. They need more of it. So boot the Carvana <laughs> sponsorship, <laughs> throw in Owen's face. It's going to get more sales. And then you got a headband on top because everyone loves some headbands. I like how, sorry, oh, that was my Berman question. Is Phil Berman is just vomiting in the chat right now. <laughs> yeah. But he loves the kit. You got to realize the more Owen, the better. Come on. Like, we got, let me go back. I mean, come I on. You don't want that guy out, in that rising uh, kit. This is, this, this preseason has driven us crazy. Like, <laughs> I things have to start because if this, if this deterioration continues, like, I don't, want, I don't want to know where we're going to be in Edwin, like a month's time. Yeah. Edwin, I can't envision your drawing because he's not wearing a headband. That's what so, I'm saying. So we need if to get him wants, a headband. 
if you and that would, way we can complete it so it's all about the headband too people don't <laughs> understand the headband right. completes the look imagine a team of 11 wearing a, like a ninja headband yeah you'd be scared yeah you'd you don't want to step into that field exactly especially you see owen's face like you don't know you don't, <laughs> you don't know what's, know going, what's on going on who is this guy you don't know what's going okay on. i like it okay so just I, i'm segueing <laughs> off of this because i've had enough of talking right, about done. my face right. on people Right, so. there's a poll up live on uh, on Twitter, by the way. Um, oh, you want to yeah, vote for who's your favorite kit was. Yeah, we'll and put out the template out too. If, there. And yeah. the template's already out as well. So if you want to send us your own one, you know, you want to do that, don't you? Yeah, be nice you about want, it. You want to yeah. tell us what your your dream rising kit <laughs> Can would Can someone do one with like the Bally Sports logo like in the front? I would love that one. So Yeah, but that, you, you can't that see it. No one can actually see that kit. <laughs> All right, y'all. That was some great stuff. I love it. I love it. But also, you know, now that we're talking about, you know, jerseys and shirts, I think we should talk about our shirt, you know? That one's a, that one's a shirt. Yeah, because uh, I didn't wear it today because it's, uh, it's in the dryer, I think. But, yeah, if you guys haven't yet, uh, you guys can go to phnxlocker.com and purchase your own phnx rising podcast shirt. Uh, it really helps us out over here if you guys go over there. It's a really nice design. If you guys wear it to uh the first game you know we'll, we'll make sure to take a picture with you you know it's awesome we already saw some people at the louisville game uh i know some people have already purchased it some of my friends so uh if you guys haven't yet make sure to support us by purchasing the phnx rising podcast official t-shirt so and uh we still need to get edwin one we got a twin that you're way telling now. me man i've been <laughs> waiting uh, I'm, I would, I'd be repping it right now if I had it, but it's all right. We're still yeah, repping it. We'll get some. him one. We'll twin. We'll do the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, PHNX, though. PHNX Locker. You can also get this shirt if you want to twin with me and Ramon, too. I mean, I recommend the soccer bird, but. Yeah, yeah. this one's right there, too. Yeah. So a lot, of, a lot of great shirts right there. If you want to talk about Landon shits, I see that Phoenix Rising Nation. Oh, yeah. What's going on with that Landon stuff? Is it, it going to happen? I, I don't know. I mean, we need a tweet, please. Can <laughs> Phoenix Rising Nation please send us the, the photo evidence that. That you received that, that you have received the, <laughs> the and al- shirt. And also, if you guys are into Twitter, you guys can follow us there on phnx underscore underscore rising. Double the underscores, double the fun. So yeah, I set you up this time. Uh, and t- it's all the space there for that poll that you need to go and, and vote in and the space to give us, you know, your own kit ideas. Exactly. Go, go do it. Come on. <laughs> we're trying to get to 500 followers. So right now, I think we're in the low 400s. But if you guys can go in there, follow us, we would appreciate you. And uh, and it will help us, you know, achieve our goal of 500 followers. So if we could do that before the first game, that would be amazing. That'd be that'd be awesome. All let's right, cool. It. Come on, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it, y'all. So uh, to kind of wrap up the show for today, we're gonna talk about the doubleheader that's happening on Saturday. So quick transition. So Rising will be playing against GCU, our local Lopes, and we'll be facing off against FC Tucson. So let's talk about the GCU game. Um, I believe that's gonna be the first one, right? That's uh. Yeah, yeah. So that's gonna be up at four o'clock. Um, GCU, of course, have played a few uh, professional teams in the in the preseason so far. They did actually beat Colorado Springs 2-0 Ooh. in Ooh. their most recent one. So, you know, don't consider this to be as easy as beating Valley United. Um, <laughs> not entirely sure yeah. what we're going to see out of them. Um, none of these spring games of theirs have been actually really visible. So, you know, it's it's hard to, to be yeah. able to tell what you're going to see. But yeah. I think, you know... Uh, who knows what the opponent will have? Who who knows? I mean, we've seen Rising went to GCU back in 2020, 2020. Mm. Um, and they you know struggled early doors and then picked it up and just wiped the floor with them. Yeah. Um, but we'll we'll see, we'll see. Uh, GCU, if you guys weren't aware, uh, they were part of the NCAA Men's Division One tournament for soccer. They actually lost in the first round, and you said earlier that they lost in their uh, conference tourney uh, in penalties, right? In yeah, the... at home as well. That, so... was, that was bad. Ooh. So two back-to-back losses. So they're part of the WAC. The, what, what's it called, Edwin? The Western? The WAC. Yeah. Uh... So sorry to put you on the spot, but yeah, it's, yeah. The it's called the WAC. W-A-C. W-A-C. Yeah. So they play in that uh, division, and they were ranked 18 in the nation in 2021. They had two players get drafted in the MLS Super Draft, uh, one of them being Isai Easley. He got drafted by Sporting Kansas City. Uh, and the other gentleman being Justin Ramusen, and he's uh, up north at Portland. So that's not bad. Those are pretty good mm-hmm. players getting drafted by the MLS. So I think, you know, it, it should, like you're saying, maybe a bit more of a challenge than Valley United, you know, yeah. GCU. Yeah, exactly. So um, when it comes to the other game, uh, Rising versus FC Tucson, obviously there's a lot of history there. What can we expect for that one? Well, I mean, there, there is history, I suppose, but it's... It's it's a for weird people one that are because new they're here, not so, like yeah. 
you know, the, these aren't teams that have ever... Oh, I'm trying to think, have they ever played each other competitively? Yeah. I know FC Tucson played the Wolves, but that's not even like... When we get into Arizona United, they were technically a successor club. Um, or oh, they were the predecessor, sorry, to mm-hmm. Phoenix Rising. Um, whereas Phoenix Wolves are an entirely different club. Um, oh, that's really testing my early Arizona United knowledge. <laughs> I don't know. Um, they played each other in friendlies before, though, of course. And Rick Shantz was one of the founders of FC Tucson. Mm-hmm. So, you yeah, know, that's a pretty big connection there when yeah. you think about it. Um, the club's also at one point, uh, FC Tucson used to be owned by Phoenix Rising. Um, in a couple of years, right? Like yeah, yeah, a couple of years under the ownership, and and in 2019 they really were used as almost that kind of like a bit like a two team. Okay, yeah, um, you had a couple of players who went up and down and up and down, and a couple of guys who, if they needed minutes to get fit or whatever, would get loaned down. Um, that changed last year. Yeah. Um, when they were, were you a fan of that system? I, it's. I'm not necessarily a fan of the idea of reserve teams in the pyramids. That's the problem, I guess. Mm. Um, I think from Rising's perspective, was it good? Yeah, it had its benefits. It set up a case where guys like, for example, guys like Declan Wynn and Shared Coy last year may not have had to have gone out on loan because they could have played. They could have mm-hmm. played in Tucson. They're still getting minutes. And then, you know, if Rising did at any point need them, they could have been brought back. Yeah, yeah, and that's how it used to work. Um, but I think, look, if you're asking me my personal opinion, you know, I we don't like a lot of the, uh, a lot of people who watch Rising, a lot of people who watch USL do not like the fact that you have those reserve teams in there. They don't like the LA Galaxy 2s. They don't like Tacoma. Those Vegas left, Lights like last year. <laughs> LAFC 2, basically. Vegas Lights are Vegas <laughs> Lights. Um, but yeah. uh, Vegas Lights, whether they were a reserve team or not, that's a whole different question. <laughs> Your favorite um, team. Your favorite yeah. team. <laughs> Real big favorite. Um, but you know, if we don't like that, what gives Rising, I guess, the right to do the same to League One? Because that's kind of what it is, mm. right? That's what it was. Sounds good. And uh, last year, FC Tucson they they were fourth in the USL League One. They lost to eventual champions Omaha Union, which uh, featured Grant Kirst at that point. Um, and they were yes, six one, I think six one. Yeah, it was. Yeah, a, it was a Kirst didn't score, but hammering. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wasn't good, but they were the eventual champions, um, uh, Omaha Union and FC Tucson had the highest number of goals against, which with with 42. So uh, if anything really has changed from there, maybe we can expect a few goals. So definitely something to t- take a look at. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as these games, uh, Owen, what can we expect? Uh, what's the main goal? Is it still fitness? Is it more tactical at this point out the, that they're the last two preseason games? I think there's still something to play for for those two strikers. Um, I think that. Now, this is where I'm getting into the is Rick playing mind games, is Rick not playing mind games? We don't really know, do we? Mm -hmm. But earlier this week when Rick was talking to us, he spoke about how he thought that, you know, Greg Hurst had had this fantastic preseason. He was really impressed with what he was seeing. Mm -hmm. And, of course, Greg had had a very good game the previous Saturday. And and Claudio Rapetto had had the opposite on the the Friday, wasn't it? Yeah. is that mind games? Is that a reminder to Claudio that, you know, we all thought that he was the the main guy. He was mm-hmm. going to probably start the season. Is it a reminder that, no, you really do have to compete. There's a lot to play mm-hmm. for here and just trying to push him. And maybe we see then something out of Claudio in reaction to that this week. Now, Greg, he said he was going to give him a give him a run with the first choice um, okay. players. So that's interesting. I think it'll be interesting to see him lining up there alongside what, we expect to be the um, remainder of the team uh, come come opening day. Do you expect day. the first stringers in the first game or hold them to the second one? I have no idea on that no one. Idea. All I know is that Rick is looking to push as many of them as possible to 90 minutes. So that's the other change. Like last last week, it was 75 minutes. Mm-hmm. That, that was why the first game was 75 yeah. minutes long. The second game, What's it the was the mass change with 15 minutes to go get the academy kids out there. This week, the plan is to push them to 90 minutes. Um, as far as injuries, Manuel Madrid, you said, was uh, in practice when you were there yeah. on Tuesday? Okay. Yeah, so he was back at his first full training session on Tuesday. Uh, Rick said it's a pretty hard one to actually bring him back in. Um, but it, I, I'm not sure whether he'll be probably ready for 90 minutes. Mm-hmm. Definitely not, I think, this, this weekend. Um, but we may see a slight cameo from him, especially given the circumstances at the moment, which is that Rising doesn't have four centre-backs to go. Uh, maybe yeah. you see a 
you know, I know there's some trialists have come in. Maybe you see some of them. Maybe you see Academy Kids, whatever, some kind of way of figuring it out so that maybe we can see Manuel out there for even if it's just 10, 15 minutes mm-hmm. in a game just to get him a bit of playing time out yeah. there. Who knows? Uh, Anguiano, he wasn't featured last week due to uh, an injury. Do you think he'll, he'll be ready? That's one I can't tell you, unfortunately. Um, yeah, Rick said that last week he, he's been battling uh, some knee issues. So, um, unfortunately, I don't really have any insight for you on on quite what we're expecting in, yeah. in terms of a time frame for him to come back. But, you know, hopefully he is fit, of course, by the start of the regular season. Yeah, for sure. And um, when it comes to these last two preseason games, who are the players that you, in your mind, feel need to have a very good game before the season starts? Who have you maybe think, hey, he needs to show us a little bit more? I know on Tuesday I kind of hinted at uh, Ivan Gutierrez maybe showing a little bit more, but who, in your mind, do you think needs to step it up? I think after that Detroit City game, um, especially in the first half, mm-hmm. I'd like to see a bounce back from some members of the midfield, uh, being Kev Lambert and Aiden Quinn. Yeah. And from the two centre backs in, in Joe Farrell and James Musa. Because there were times in that game where it didn't feel like they were playing as good as they can, mm-hmm. and as good as we know them to be able to play. So I want to see them bounce back because I know that they are very talented players that realistically should be starting in mm-hmm. the first game of the season. And they have to come in with the right mindset, the right level of confidence. And I don't think that we saw that against Detroit City. For sure. Edwin, do you uh, have someone in mind that you feel needs to step it up? Ooh, that's a good one. Because uh, like I said, I, I kind of hinted at it Tuesday about Ivan Gutierrez. I think it's going to be the players that can cement themselves better and, and position themselves as the season go on. So it's the Gutierrez Madrid as well. I mean, when, when he came, we thought that he was going to get more minutes and be more of a presence. I don't think he's done that quite yet. If Levin's still going to play that center back role, I want to see him step up there too. I know that may be an option, the fourth center back. So I think that would be a fair shout. And uh, another one I'll throw out would be Marcus Epps. I want to see the finishing. I want to see, I want to see a man who's getting, you know, heading into the season, you know, clicking right off the bat, because I think he's going to be a huge, huge element to the success of this season. And fans are going to be wanting a lot out of him. Let's be honest. When you're replacing solo, it's not easy. So you're, he's going to have big shoes to fill. So I think for him having a good, Final day would be would be huge. I think it would be it'd be just monumental for the rising and the in the attack if, if he's clicking. That's just outside of what Owen said because I agree with what yeah. the players that he's laid out. And we saw that last Friday where you know he just said, you know what, I'm gonna drop down, I'm gonna take over this game, and he did. And so that's that's something uh, that all rising fans can can look forward to. I think Repetto, I feel like he should you know really strive to have a really good game. I know you were mentioning him earlier. Uh, against Louisville City, he had that goal that you know was called off sides. Unfortunately, he missed the penalty this last uh, outing against Detroit. So you know, I don't want his confidence to maybe go down a little bit. I want him to come out strong and, and you know start the season, uh, uh, you know, at, at full cylinder. So definitely really good. Do you think we'll see? Last question for you, Owen. Do you think we'll see the four four two again that we saw last week? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. Um. I think that the 4-4-2 we saw is not going to disappear mm-hmm. in the way that the uh, three at the back did last year. Um, I think that it's something that's going to remain in the pocket, ready to be picked out when it's read, when it's needed. Yeah. But I don't know if we'll see it tomorrow. It, it partly depends, I guess, on what Rick expects to see in terms of tactically even from the, from the, from the teams that yeah. they're going to face on, on Saturday. Because... You know, Tucson are likely to show up in a in a four three three, um unless they're trying something new, which I'm not aware of. Um it, it could be that uh, we have really no idea what GCU we're gonna line up with. Yeah. Um I mean that's hard to really know without going back and watching all of their film to know how they like to play. Mm-hmm. You know, the the data at a college level isn't quite there. Um it, it's interesting. I think that it's an option, but I wouldn't necessarily say we should expect yeah. to see it. Okay. Um, let's read some comments here. Uh, we have Thomas saying Hurst is locking down the nine. Uh, you know, maybe. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll make sure to keep you updated on that, see, see what's going on. Hopefully, we don't lose to GCU this time. Is that what happened in 2020? Uh, 
Uh, I love Farrell, but he hasn't looked good this preseason. I I think they're all kind of it's preseason mode. I think that's mm-hmm. how they are right now. And mm-hmm. I think one of the goals Farrell did have something to do with it. I, I know Musa maybe wasn't a hundred percent last game as well. So uh, Jared said uh, he wants a four three three. Uh, Charleston Batter just released their kits. Looks like somebody spilled uh, paint in the back of the white kit. So I have to check this out. Well, you know, if we're talking about kits, I'd just like to shout out our own Phoenix Rising Nation. Uh, he's there in the chat, but. You go check him out on Twitter, and in fact, you can find it via our Twitter at <laughs> phnx underscore underscore rising, double the underscore double the fun. Um, you know, he's just submitted an absolute stormer of a kit, and I think that you you really really I don't know have whether to go to take, take him a seriously look. or not, but <laughs> you've got to go take a look. I think you know he's and and following his footsteps. Use the template. Come on, let, let's see what you want to see. And he did a lot on the show, see. so he's multitasking right now. Appreciate he is. That. He's watching. He's joining in the comments, and he's posting some <laughs> really good content. Great stuff there. All right, y'all. Well, that kind of that wraps it up for this week's show. We appreciate you guys for tuning in. Again, if you haven't subscribed, make sure to do so. Make sure to like and share it with your buddies. Make sure to have them watch us here. If you weren't able to catch our show, you can always watch us or hear us on our streaming uh, on streaming sites. Uh, and make sure to like us there as well and subscribe to the show. So, um, again, Monday, uh, or actually Saturday, we have a double header, so we'll be there. And if you guys, uh, I don't think it's open or streaming anywhere, right? Well, it's not open. Streaming is still, there's no official line on that yet. So if they're not streaming, we'll most likely do what we did last week, which is, you know, grab the best clips, have Owen running back and forth all the time. And, uh, <sighs> and I'll be live tweeting it. So that'll be pretty fun. So. Uh, so we'll be there. But we'll get you all the updates, everything you need to know about the games um, mm-hmm. if there's no stream. So and then Monday again at the Churchill, 6 p.m., be there at B-Square. We're going to be there for the jersey reveal and the new captain reveal. That's going to be pretty fun. So we'll be back here on Tuesday with the new captain. We will be, yeah. So make sure to tune in then and make sure to to follow us on Monday as well for all the latest from there because we'll be, we'll be out on social. Or say hi if you see us there. Just don't walk up to us and say hi when we're recording, please. Just like show us I, your I don't shirt. know why I said that because now I know that people will. Um, <laughs> that was a bad error of That's judgment. Terrible. At least I knew as soon as I said that, that was a bad error of judgment. <laughs> but hey, we're going with it. We're going with it. Yeah. And then Tuesday, <laughs> we'll have the captain with us. It's going to be a great time. And again, if you guys haven't followed us on Twitter, phnx underscore underscore rising. Double the underscores, double the fun. There you go. Get us to 500 people. Yeah. All right, y'all. That wraps it up. We'll be seeing you next time. We out.